What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. So we're back with another keto conversation and we want to kind of talk about a really basic topic on keto. But if you're new to keto, it's something you probably some people don't understand. Uh, we know that because we've, been, we've gotten comments about it and Lots people questions. ask some questions about it. So we're going to talk it talk about macros we're going to do a really high overview of right it's going to be a very basic discussion about yeah. macros we're not going to do a deep dive or yeah. anything like that we get a lot of questions what are macros yeah. uh track your macros what uh your macros might be off does it fit into your macros you hear all of those typical sayings and so that's why we've right. decided to discuss and so if you don't know what macros are then we want to help this you. is the discussion we help for you, you. <laughs> give you some really basic information i will say this that we will link uh, so there was an article or several articles that we read, but we, there's one in particular that we kind of referenced that we thought was really good. Yes. A lot of really good explanations, uh, but it was easy to understand, uh, but it was done in such a way where I think anybody could understand it uh, with a lot of good examples. And so we will link to that article as well. And then you can read and you can read it multiple times if you need to. You know, to understand and digest. It, it was a very good basic discussion for me because, to be perfectly honest, I have lost a hundred pounds of body fat without having calculated any macros besides general All carbohydrates. Right. So, a lot of times when I get questions about macros, I don't really know where to guide the person to because that is not how I chose to go about my ketogenic journey. But right, and I've lost. Uh, 70 to 75 pounds depending on what day of the week it is and get on the scale uh, and I did count macros right. um, I've probably gotten a lot looser with my macros over the last uh, probably over the last six to seven months but uh, I'm actually starting to track my macros again and so I could this is a really good topic for me not because I don't know what, the, what they are but I am tracking like a refresher it's a course. refresher and so so Everybody's different on keto. Some people can do like Sarah and kind of be eat intuitively and not really track everything. Some of us need to track everything that we eat. You have to know yourself. And uh, there is no, I'm not gonna say there's any right or wrong between the two of them. You exactly. have to figure out what works best for you. Well, and it, it kind of, it also depends on what your health goals are. If you okay. are doing this lifestyle for weight loss, you're doing it just for health management if you have to be extremely strict because you're trying to help a condition like seizures or epilepsy then you know how you set up your ketogenic lifestyle can be different within those parameters also depending on how insulin resistant you are personally yeah yeah so. yeah and I know that myself when I started when I started keto I have been diagnosed as being a type 2 diabetic and I'm pretty sure, and, I, and I've avoided us talking about being insulin sensitive. I, I've kind of avoided that topic. Uh, we probably will visit it sometime this year, but I'm pretty sure that, so essentially when you, when you talk about being insulin sensitive, basically the way your body reacts to probably anything sweet, yes, it, it may still react even though it may be within all the guidelines right. that we talk about and your reaction to right. like artificial sweeteners my, and even fruit can sometimes yeah, my be insulin than, reaction may be right. different because I was already uh, ha was having issues with my insulin when I started keto and when I started keto I did not have any health markers that were yeah. up above in the in the normal range so yeah. we did start out with this lifestyle in a different two um, different places different places as far as our health yeah. and our weight so. right all right so let's get going uh the first thing we're going to talk about is what are macros right and so essentially <laughs> um i'm going to start and then i guess you add something on to it okay. it's really a kind of a measurement of energy uh energy that your body needs so that's all it is that's when you hear the term macros we're talking about a measurement of energy that's used by to fuel your body. And the main, you wanna add anything to that? Well, macros is short for macronutrients. Okay. So we Thank are you. talking about nutrients. Macronutrients. And then we're not gonna cover 
every nutrient that there is. No, because the three most important is what right. we're going to be discussing. That's what we're going to cover. Right. We're going to cover the, the three, three most important, which would be um, carbohydrates, protein, fat, and you know, I'm also going to say fiber as well. We're going to talk okay. about we're going to talk and about fiber, fiber. Could go under the carbohydrate as category. a subset of right of carbs. So because usually when when you tell people you're on you know a low carb diet or a no carb diet, they think what? Well, you can't exist without carbs. But yeah. where that's where fiber is going to come in because right. fiber is something that is generally enjoyed on the ketogenic lifestyle. So right. All right, so let's let's just start with car carbohydrates. Right. So macro macros or macronutrients is basically a measurement of the types of energy that's taken into your body, and essentially there we're going to talk about three main types: carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And of um, the three, carbohydrates are the macronutrient that is not essential for survival. Right. So a lot of people believe that you've got to have carbohydrates, right. and that is just not so. There is scientific ev evidence that can prove that you do not need carbohydrates. Exactly. Your body will produce what it, what needs, it needs and if it's lacking carbohydrates. Right. There are essential amino acids and there are essential fatty acids, but there are no such things as essential carbohydrates. Right. And so essentially on a keto diet, on the keto diet, the one of the basic tenets is to get your carbohydrates to a general rule might be 20 right. to 30 grams of carbs per day. Essentially, to have success on the ketogenic lifestyle, you are going ha to have to limit your carb intake to some extent, and that will yes. vary based on your individual and needs. But now, so when when people, so when you start talking about 20 to 30 grams of carbs, most of us don't even know what that means. Right. But part of it is you don't. You, most of us don't realize how many carbs we're eating right now every day. We got a, exactly. you know, we got a comment the other day, and I'm not trying to be offensive to whoever wrote this comment, but somebody wrote a comment about our, I think it was the, the carrot cake, carrot recipe. cake, and it's they said something about well, it's nine carbs or something. They they were quoting what the carbs were and saying, and wow. it was the entire serving of carrots for the recipe. Yes, that's what they were quoting. It was they like were, three ounces of carrots is all that was required right, for the cake. For the entire recipe. And that's, we're talking a two-layer plus cream cheese right, frosting right. carrot okay, cake. But let's let's not okay. we're not because but the point the point behind the story is is the person said, well that wow nine you know what nine the, carbs nine carbs are from the carrots. That's not basically that's not ketogenic. And right, and that's not keto. Well, so. The first reaction that I had, and I did not write this, was, well, you know, that is a problem if you sit down and eat the entire cake <laughs> at one time. But the servings are calculated by the amount of, you know, servings you can get from the cake. And nine carbs for the entire cake is still a drop in the bucket yes. considered to what you would be receiving if you ate a traditional Because I think cake. we actually looked up what one slice of a carrot cake from was, like Costco, from Costco. It was like thirty grams for a slice. From one slice. One. Right. right. So you could you could make like three of those carrot cakes and eat every single crumb right. of three carrot cakes and still not get as many carbs as in one slice. Yeah. So. so anyway, we so just keep that in perspective about carbs when so when we say twenty to thirty grams of carbs per day, that's that's the general rule of thumb. Some people, some things you might read might actually say even up to fifty grams. Right. And it kind of depends on the person because everybody's different. And once again, keeping in mind your goals yes. and where you at on, on your journey, because someone in, you know, my case where my journey is more towards the maintenance side of a low carb lifestyle, I might be able to get away with a few more carbs now yes. that I have, have reached a desirable weight for my frame. Yeah. So it all depends again on what your goals are, what your sensitivities are, if you have health concerns, if you have something that you're trying to prevent or avoid like diabetes or things like that. It's going to depend on that what your overall carb right. intake should be. Right. So anyway, and we and we always talk about this when we talk about just really when if you're starting keto, if this you, is the basic. If you can get the the whole concept of getting your carbs down to 20 to 30 grams per day. If you that can, is going to get you if started. You can, right. Yeah. If you can just do that. 
that will get you started. And some of this other stuff you can figure out and tweak if, if as you fall go, in line, right? As yeah. you go along. Yeah. But that is one of the base foundation blocks that you got to have to be successful on keto. So the second part of the carbohydrate macronutrient discussion is going to be fiber now. Fiber. Okay, go ahead. So fiber is considered a carb, but it doesn't generally count as an overall carb tally. And that is, is an accepted thing in a low carbohydrate lifestyle because your body really cannot digest fiber. And so it has minimal it's impact not on your blood sugar. Soluble. Right. Right. So you have some examples. Here yeah. So I have some examples and what I'll do is I'll put these pictures on the screen because you can't see what I'm reading. So this is a, bag of macadamia nuts and it says that the total carbs is four and this is for serving size for, for, for mm -hmm. serving size uh the dietary fiber is two so the way you would and then there and then there is some sugar in macadamia nuts there's one gram of sugar for a serving okay so the way you would use the fiber in this example there's four total carbs. You would minus the two from the four, right. and you would say that for one serving, not one bag, but one serving, which of is about twenty-four nuts, according oh, to their. No, no. Oh no, it's not. twenty-four servings. It's I'm twenty-four sorry. servings. It's one ounce. I wish it was twenty-four nuts. Yeah, one no. ounce. Anyway, well, that's a whole different video about <laughs> nuts and, and being careful. Red with light, nuts. red light. But. So essentially, this with one serving of macadamia nuts would be two net. net carbs. So when you hear people talk about net carbs, even when you look at our macros for the recipes that we do, I will always have the total carbs and then I will have the net carbs because some people actually do count total carbs. Yes, if you're extremely hyperinsulinemic yeah. and you have a serious reaction to carbohydrates yes. and you're really trying to watch your insulin, right. some people will count total carbs. Yes, right. and I'm actually feeling like, you know what, I may need to start doing that. In I order to reach to, your final goals. I may need to start actually counting, and this is for me personally, I may need to start counting total, total carbs. carbs. Now, and not just net. this particular article that we're going to reference had a really nice example of what we're talking about when we're saying total carbs versus net carbs. Yes. So the example that she gave was taking your gross income when you get a paycheck from your job and on your stub, it will say gross income. That is the total that you made every month completely. Mm -hmm. But then you take your income taxes out and that would be like your fiber your fiber would be your income taxes and then what you're left with is your net income and so in a similar fashion you're left with your net carbs yeah and that's a great so example i thought it was a very very when, good example because most of us receive a paycheck and yeah, know how that and works. we can understand so, that how that works. exactly so it's actually the money that you get to keep it's actually the carbs you get to eat. Yes. So yes. it's similar. And you know, there's some foods. And so one of the things I guess that we, that we want to say that we need to make sure we say is when you're starting to eat doing keto, it's important for you to either, so if you're going to track your macros, it's important for you to pay attention to what these labels say. Especially like vegetables too. And yes. a lot of vegetables don't have labels on them unless you get frozen ones. But say you, you got a, a head of fresh broccoli, you can look up what yes. the fiber is in broccoli. So then you can take that yes. out. And there's the and there's all kinds of resources online with that you can look up. Like if you right. want to look up Sarah said broccoli, you can do that. In right. fact, I do that all the time when I'm, sometimes when I'm doing recipes, if the numbers don't look right, I might right. Ver double check this ingredient in this amount and come up to make sure I'm looking at, it, you know, that the calculator that we use comes up with the right. Now, your second example involves sugar alcohols. Correct? Yes. The second, okay. second one involves sugar alcohol. So, um, so I think we got a comment recently about the sucre and gold and it being made from sugar. Right. And it talks about on it, it actually does say probably sugar alcohol. Right. Uh, and so there are natural sweeteners, uh, like, so for example, this is a Lily's chocolate bar. Right. Uh, we use a lot of their products in like, we get chips that chocolate chips that we're using. We may use a lot of their products. And if I look at this, this, uh, label, 
uh, a serving is 40 grams. There's two servings. This so whole half bar, the bar is basically. two servings. So half the bar is one serving. And that would equal 22 total carbs. So you could look at that and you could say, I can eat this Lily's chocolate bar and I'm done eating for the day because there's my 20 carbs. Right, right. But that's not really how it works. How it really works. So if you go on to the next line under total carbs of 22, it says the dietary fiber is 11. So again, if so you go back to the example right. that Sarah just gave, you would subtract the, you know, the 11 from the 22 and you're back down to 11. Right. And so now there's one more thing here that's listed and it's something called erythritol. And that's a natural sweetener. That, that is a sugar alcohol. That is yeah. a sugar alcohol that is used a lot in the keto world. We use it a lot in a lot of the things we make. And it is six grams of erythritol. So we're at so we said what, 22 11. minus mm -hmm. 11 equals 11 minus six. Then you're left with five total carbs right. for half five of the Five net bar. carbs for this half right. a candy bar. Now the reason that sugar alcohols are taken out is because generally they, re they react in a similar way in your body because most of these natural sweeteners are also made with plant fibers. And so your body does not recognize them as a food. Mm -hmm and immediately pushes them out. But once again, as we've stated before, there are certain sensitive individuals that react differently to yes. certain sweeteners. So that's going to have to be something that is a trial and error for you yes. personally. And each person is different in which sweeteners react to them and which ones do not. Yes, yes. So that is that is That is some, carbs. That is that carbs. That is macronutrient carbs in a nutshell. Right. Carbs, fibers, erythritol, how to handle all that. That's we just covered that. Okay. So, so the next, number two. Next one we're gonna talk about is protein. And you right. want do you want to have any notes on, on protein? Sure. So protein is required for growth, mm -hmm. tissue repair, and also immune function. So it is essential. It is the building block right. of the body. It's, protein it's is number one. If you do not have protein, you will indeed die. It is essential. So it is an essential macronutrient. And you need enough protein to maintain your lean body mass. And sometimes when we start talking about weight loss on any kind of dietary lifestyle, a lot of times we'll just talk about weight loss instead of fat loss. Right. So we need to reprogram our minds to think about fat loss because we do not want to lose our lean body mass. We want to preserve our lean body mass. And in order to do that, we need to be making sure that we are eating enough protein to sustain our personal lean body mass and be focusing on losing fat or adipose tissue. Right, right. So there are lean mass calculators, lots and lots of them, mm -hmm. because we need to figure out what our own personal lean mass calculation is and work to continue to keep that as we're losing body fat. Yes. And so if we want to focus on losing that fat and preserving our muscle, we need to be eating enough protein. And generally on the ketogenic lifestyle, it's about 0.8 to 1.2 grams per lean body right. mass. Right. So you basically need to figure out what your lean body mass is. And usually that is done through a percentages process. But right. you do have to be careful what calculations you use on that as well, because things like BMI, as we've discussed in the past, aren't always accurate as far as measuring your lean body mass. It can be hard to do unless you get some kind of, you know, um, a test, yeah. which, you know. And we're going to, as we continue, we're going to go talk about some, I guess, some calculators that might be available that can kind of assist you with getting some of these numbers, especially if you're going to be a person that's going to track your macro. But most professionals, uh, scientists and doctors who study protein, like Dr. Ben Bickman, they do encourage you to err on the side of having maybe a little bit more protein than less protein, especially as you get into, say, our age range, 40s, 50s, is because mm -hmm. as you age, your protein, your lean mass can start to diminish even without you doing anything. And so it's essential, especially as you get older, to make sure that you are getting enough protein. And sometimes protein can be a hot topic in the ketogenic lifestyle yes, okay. because people get afraid of gluconeogenesis and getting too much protein. It doesn't generally happen too often unless you have health markers to the contrary. So definitely err on the side of maybe getting a little bit more than you think you need. And you can adjust that as you see your results. But right. definitely concentrate on making sure that you're getting good sources of protein. Right. So you keep your carbs 
low. Right. And generally for the ketogenic lifestyle, when we're talking about protein, we're talking about animal sources. Of course, there are some people who do practice a vegetarian style sure. keto lifestyle, but for the most part, we are talking about animal products, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy products. Right. Right. And then the last macronutrient that we're going to talk about is fat. Yes. My favorite. Yeah. We're going to talk about <laughs> fat. And you need... Fat is, in our society has been kind of villainized. Is that the right yeah. word? Villainized um, over this over the years, um, and more and more trans fats and things. Right, have been more added. and more. Yeah, more. But more and more studies are being shown that hey, you know what? Maybe we went down the wrong road. Right. When we when we in the eighties and nineties yeah. when we substituted all the yeah. animal fats. Yeah, we maybe, started getting more. You know, more. there's actually studies that are being done. There's research has been done that said you know what maybe we went the wrong way right. with all this low fat no fat all that stuff maybe we we were doing more harm than good because if you look at our society we should have all been super thin if that were if yeah that were the case. if the last 30 years you know yeah. how come we're and, just more and more obese and, and our children and are obese right and right. so it's just not so and a lot of us were eating low carb i mean not low carb but low fat right no fat they were doing that. Margarine so, became really popular right. and things like so that. So you need adequate amount, amounts of fat. Fat, you need fat for energy. Yes. Um, I actually wrote this down. Growth, uh, development, uh, even for protecting your organs. Yes. You need a certain amount of fat. I know yes. that when we see people that are super lean and we can see the cuts and everything, that looks really cool. But there is a purpose for fat in your Your body. brain is mostly made up of fat. Yeah. So you do want to have an adequate amount of fat. And if you're if you're practicing the ketogenic lifestyle and your goal is keeping carbs to a minimum and only eating a moderate amount of protein to sustain your lean mass, you're going to have to make up the rest of your foods By, with something and else and it's going to be fat. It's going to so, be through fat. Right. Now, if your goal on keto, if, you're, if the ideal is that you're trying to lose weight, you may need to pull back on the amount of and fat. And I've always you... understood that fat is a lever as right. far as satiation because fat does indeed help to keep you full and it makes your foods taste good. So that's good. what satiation means. Right. It helps keep you full. Full. You're, you're satisfied. Right. right. And so, you know, you want to, you don't want to be, you know, guzzling the MCT oil and butter in your coffee just because you think you need to reach a certain amount of fats every day. You really should be using fats more of, you know, a help a guide a lever if you're still hungry if you're not you know if you don't feel like you're getting enough instead of trying to pile drive the fat in just for fat and sake. I, I think when you I know when I first started keto I probably I'm, I'm sure I ate probably more you OD'd on the fat. I probably ate more fat than I needed but I also had lowered did all the other things correctly and so there was a there's a point where I did have to cut back on my fat, but again there are certain you know, and again we're going to show you how you can calculate all these macros for you for yourself. But if you're trying to lose fat, not just weight but fat, then you will need to cut back on your fat. Right. But the rest of but that number will still probably be higher than you think it will right. be, especially based on is what what the thought processes that, that are in our head about fat. And initially, when you first begin this lifestyle, adding that additional fat can motivate your body, if you will, yes. to start burning its own fat. And I think that's what, I, I, think that's I, think what it, I was trying to say. It kind of creates a yeah. safe environment for your body to say, yeah. oh, okay, fat, we've got some extra fat coming in. Fat is welcome. Awesome. Let's go ahead and use what we've got. So sometimes when you first begin, Thank having you. that extra amount of fat can create a safe environment for your body to start recognizing fat as something friendly and not something that should be right. avoided. Right, because... Remember that before you started keto, you were, your body was using carbs or glucose right. as its primary fuel. Right. The whole point behind keto is to get into ketosis, and that is essentially so that you can start using your own fat. You, using fat for, for fuel as, instead as of As fuel sugar. for your body. So right. what Sarah just said is, is by maybe having that extra fat at the very beginning, it sends a signal to your body Hey, this is our new fuel. This, this is our yeah. new fuel. We got plenty of it. <laughs> right. And let's, let's just start. Let's work with it. Let's start yeah. working with it and burning because we don't have that. We don't have all that glucose exactly. you know, floating around anymore. So this is a new fuel that we can use. And there's been some research that shows that your body functions better. Yes. It is, per, it is the preferred source yes. for your brain. Yes. Yes. 
And when we're talking about fats, to be clear, we're talking about animal fats, avocado, coconut oil, mm -hmm. um, butter, cream, avocados themselves, and also nuts are considered good, healthy fats. We would we would like to attempt to avoid the other types of fats, yes. the soybean oils, the canola oils, the trans fats, and those kinds yes. of things. Of and course, it's hard to avoid that completely. A lot of products have them, yeah. but do your best. Yeah, and we have a video, and I guess I can link to that as well. We actually have a video where we, we talk discuss about the different different fats. types of fat that we use to cook and prepare things with. Right. And so I'll link to that if you want to check and that out. And that gives you a more detailed view of the different types of fats right. on All the right. lifestyle. So we've done some really basics about the macronutrients that are probably the most key for keto and getting started with keto. So how do you put all that together? Right. So uh, one of the things that I used when I first started were there are actually keto calculators that are out there. Just to calculate your macros yes, or your macronutrients. Yes, to calculate your macronutrients. Because your macronutrients will not be the same as my macronutrients. Exactly. That's a good point. Not just because one of us is a man, one of us is a woman. We're different ages. We have different body goals. We have different health concerns. There's all different reasons why it's going to be different from person to person. That's why I can't tell you, even if I were to sit down and write a list of my personal macronutrients, you would not be able to then turn around and do exactly what Sarah is doing because we are not the same person. Right. And so what I do might not necessarily work for you. So this is a completely individualized thing. Right. And so keto calculators are a good way to plug in some numbers. Most of them start with you have to plug in different numbers, your you know markers like your age, your, your height, height your, weight, your weight, your goals, how sedentary you yeah, are. Yeah, right. So there's they're pretty standard. There's lots of different ones. Uh, I know some of the ones I've used, I've used actually tonight before we did this, I actually used the one by the folks at Keto Gains. Mm -hmm. Keto Gains is a group of uh, ketoers who uh, they are probably sh really strict keto, but they also are really into late lifting weights and right. using weights as you facilitate keto and do keto right. so keto gains i actually follow them i look at some of their before and, and they're after probably pictures. a good site because they will help you focus on conserving your lean mass yes, if that's yes, what we're looking for yes and so the keto gains site actually has a good keto calculator i actually just used it tonight just to test it out and it's actually different and they've actually made some improvements from the from the last time i used it years ago so that's that's nice that they're continuing that's, to that's update. That's a good site. Right. Uh, the folks over at Keto Connect. If you don't know who Keto Connect is, they have a channel on YouTube. They have a keto calculator on on their blog as well. You can plug in pretty much the same types of numbers. Um, who else? Uh, there's one out there. If you just type in keto calculator, one that will come up is um there's a free well and all of these are free yeah. i should say that i should start off by saying i, I would imagine there are probably apps all of these for, but yeah there's these no are point. these are free these are free tools that you can just find online and I'll, I'll link to some of the ones that we've used so there's keto calculators out there and basically you punch in the, the information that they ask for and bam it will spit out the the carbs that you should be eating the amount of fat and protein. a lot of times it will be laid out in columns like if you if weight loss is your goal this is what you need to do yes. if maintenance is your goal this is what you need to do if putting on muscle is what yes. your goal this is what you need to do so a lot of times it is categorized by your health goals yes yes and so and most of them are fairly simple to use and so we'll put some links to that so that's one of the easiest ways to to find out your macros is by and like I said, using a keto a calculator, uh, they're really handy tools and probably 99.9% .9 of them are free uh, and just available for people to use. Once you have determined your personal set of macros, then you can start building meal plans around your foods that you've identified as being within your macros and things like that. So that's why it's helpful to know what your macros are. Right. And then the last thing I'm going to close with is... So we told you there's keto calculators out there. There's also keto apps you can use for your computers. You can use them on your phones if you have, you know, if you use a phone. 
Um, and one of the ones that I just started using, I've seen pe a lot of people use it online, uh, is Carb Manager. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like about Carb Manager that um, for years when I first started keto, I used My Fitness Pal, uh, which is a huge fitness site. Um, I used it even before keto. But um, the problem I had with My Fitness Pal is that it did not do net carbs. It didn't calculate those. Uh, I discovered the Carb Manager app, and it actually calculates net carbs. It does all That's that. Awesome. You punch in the foods. I've been really happy with the food database and how easy it is to use. And so the, the accuracy seems to be yes, there with it that does. App. And you can also, uh, I know we had we had there was something out of the keto crate that wasn't in their database. Oh, it was those brownies, mm -hmm. and I actually put those brownies in and it was actually fairly simple for me to put the information which is in. nice because then the next person who maybe yes. received it in the keto crate and wanted to know those things then you have done something for them so right. like sharing and helping right and so uh, that's just two carb manager is really good and then like I said I've used my fitness pile in the past uh, it's got some pluses and minuses but I really right now like carb manager they're not paying me to say anything it's just something I'm using and I actually do find it very easy to use and it's got a lot of good information. And by the way, you can actually go use Carb Manager. Now it actually does cost to use certain features in it. So there actually, I will be disclosed that there is some cost if you It's want. like a lot of apps yeah. where you, you, there are in-app purchases yes. if you yes. want so it to Yes, so I, I will say that. So, but it wasn't so much where I felt like, wow, it, you know, it was- It wouldn't be worth it to Right, you. I, yeah. because I know I was paying $60 a year for my fitness pal. Right. And then I was barely, you know, it wasn't, I still had to do a lot of extra work. Right. And so anyway, that there are apps out there so you can track your macros. Once you have them, you can track them. And a lot of those apps, you can start and even they have calculators built into them as well. So Carb Manager, if you downloaded that for your phone or your iPad or it whatever has a, device. Does it have a macro It calculator? has a macro calculator built into the process of starting on their using so the So it app. could be like one-stop shopping. Yes. Awesome. And so it's, it's convenient. Keto is a real thing, and so there's <laughs> real apps out there that people are using, and people are having success using these apps so that they can live the keto lifestyle. So I think that's it for this yeah. week. Hopefully um, we've provided what the heck are macros, and why do I need yeah. them, and how do I find them. Yep, yeah. and so if, if you're new to this channel, this is our keto conversation segment that we do every Wednesday. Uh, we do new recipes every Sunday. Uh, we want you to be part of our keto family, so su consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell uh, because we do this every week. And uh, we're always here to help you be successful on the keto lifestyle and the keto diet. So we will talk at you later. Hope that you have a great rest of the week. And bye-bye. Peace. Peace.